Hey guys, it's Cheryl from Tinker's Card Art, and I thought I would pop in here and show you some quick and easy mums. I just finished this painting. This is one of my first new fall paintings. I know it's still very summery here. I'm in Maine at the beach now, and I hate to give up the summer, but fall's coming, so I've been working on some paintings. This is a piece for my art membership, the Tinker's Cardist's membership, but I wanted to pop in and just show you how to do these mums real quick. They're super easy. I'll show you some really simple techniques. Hi, Patty, thank you for watching. Um, if anyone's interested in the Cardist membership, just in the uh, comments, put membership and I'll send you some info. I will be opening the membership up at the end of September. So it's kind of exciting. But um, anyways, so this is one of my members paintings they're gonna do in September. It's just for them. But I wanna show you guys how to do the mums because they're pretty fun and they're super simple. So. I'm going to just jump in. I'm going to just paint it on some paper just so you can see the technique. It's sort of a technique that you can watch me do and then practice and um, pretty easy. Hi, Mary Jane, Catherine. You guys are great for popping in. I'm always the last minute. Um, hi, Karen. I loved your painting. Your thankful um, pumpkin you did with Michelle. That is so cool. I loved it. I was on with Michelle this morning. So thank you. Thanks, Patty. I'm going to turn the camera down. You'll go upside down for a second but don't get too dizzy and uh, then we'll then I'll show you what I'm working on so hang on there and we'll try to get it the right orientation for you I'm just doing it on paper like I said and I'm gonna pull you up on the computer so that I can see any comments and whatnot you might have and I'm going to make sure that we are um, that you can see me I'll probably have you upside down let's see let's see you're sideways it looks like hang on Okay, I'm a little delay there, so let me make sure that you guys are the right direction. Tell me in the comments um, where you're watching me from. Tell me in the comments if I'm sideways or upside down. Hey, Mandy. Nice to see you guys. And I keep being sideways. Let's try this. Let's try that. I won't start until you are the right way. And all I've done is painted on my paper here. I'm still spinning because I'm a delay on my end on my computer. And now I've got you, but you are upside down. So we'll do this again. You guys have such good patience for me because this is always an issue of me turning my phone the correct way. Anyways, I just put a little bit of a green background here on my paper. I don't want to paint um, the mums right on the white of the canvas or white of the paper. I want something behind them. You can see on this that there's leaves behind here. I would paint those first and then pop my mums on top. Easier than trying to paint something in around them after you've done them. But for practice, just put some color on your paper or on your canvas or anything. So it's just some green, so a couple shades I've put on there. It's pretty much dry. I'm going to do, actually I'll put my painting up here so I can see it. I'm going to do a purple one, kind of a white one, and then a yellow. This technique you can use on any color, mom. You can just use your base color of the color that you want your, you know, what you want your mom to be. So for instance, on the white, white on white is not gonna show up. So I made, I started those guys in a kind of a blue gray. I'll pull this over so you can see me mixing. So I just took a little bit of blue, black, and I'm gonna take some white. Whenever I'm using gray, I always add some blue, ultramarine or thalo. Can you see it's just a prettier gray? It's still gray, but it's got a little blue tint and it's so much nicer than just the dull gray um, of the black and white. As a matter of fact, that barn board technique behind here is gray, but again, it's very blue gray and it just is a little richer and a little more interesting to look at. So on my white mums, I'm starting gray. I'm going to start dark on all of my mums and work lighter. I do that with so much of my painting. So we are just going to paint in they're very rough oval shapes. I mean, as, as rough as that. What I'm going to do is do the other layers right now because on paper, this paint is going to dry super fast. So I paint my background and then I go in with a very light gray. These are just little comma strokes. So I'm going to just start up here and can you see I'm just doing like a little press and pull stroke, press and pull. If you were painting this on your canvas, you would drag a little bit of that gray color in your white, which is what you want to do. On the, on the paper, it dries pretty fast, but it's the same strokes. You're just gonna do little press and pull strokes. Just like that, make a layer or two. I'm working it outside down, a layer or two of those little strokes there. 
And then I'm gonna almost start like there's a little ball, a little bowl shape in the middle. It's gonna be something like that. These guys on the sides start heading downward. Just pulling them in and down here, the bottom ones press and pull in. Very much like what we did here, press and pull. And then I'll just maybe start curving them to the side. And then I'm gonna just do a row here. Now they're not exactly, exactly, exactly like a real mum, but they're gonna give you the impression of a mum. And all I did to start was just a little oval of a base color. I'm not trying to fill in every bit of the background with my, my little strokes I'm doing. I wanna hop in there pretty quick, do some in there that are kind of a light gray. And then I just keep adding layers until a few on the top are just white. So I'm gonna go into my white now because I'm hoping that it will pick up a little of the gray. And I'm doing the same thing. I'm not going right over the strokes I made. I'm not, I'm not positioning them in any particular way. You just randomly pop them in there. They might cover a stroke you made. They might go in between a stroke you made. They might, you know, I am not calculating exactly where they go. I'm just doing that initial row like I did. I'm gonna do a little row here, another row. Just adding more white as I go. It's turning a little blue gray, that's fine. And then I'm going to do this little bowl shape I've got here. These little guys are fun on the corner because you sort of just poke them out there. Can you see it's forming a little mum kind of a flower? And then down here, I am doing the same strokes. You can see some of the dark through. You can see some of the light blue gray strokes through. And I would let that dry. At the very end, we'll go over all of the mums we've made and give some nice white uh, strokes just here and there, not everywhere. And like I said, you're having to work a little faster here on the paper than the canvas. You would have more time. You could probably do two or three ovals of the background color. Go right around and put your little stro white strokes without it drying so quick. But where we're drying quick here, I'm just going to do a few, uh, do a mum of each color just to show you how I do that. Any questions, put them in the comments. Hi, Karen. Karen, we're doing the, yeah, yes, I will post this little video, of course, on the Cardis group, but then you guys are going to have this painting. It's on the schedule that you got the other day. So, hi, Trish. Karen, yeah, I think I'm, I'm back to right side up now. So anyways, the goldy color, the yellow mum, I start, this is like a yellow ochre, a golden ochre color. Again, I just roughly do that overly shape. I'm going to go in and take a little, taking a little of the regular cad yellow and some white maybe. I just want a lighter shade. I don't want to go into white on the first set of these little guys. I'm gonna make this mum this way a little more. So again, press and pull. Anytime you're doing something like this and you start picking up too much of the dark gold that's underneath, just wipe it on your paper towel. And go back into your lighter color. You can vary up the way these go a little bit, but basically it's these first row on the back edge, then a little second row. They can even get a little tighter in the middle if you've got that little mum with that little closed center. And you can even start here with them opening up. And this is the stroke that I'm sort of using. I'm pressing and pulling, pressing and pulling. Pressing the brush down, you get that little uh, pod shape there, and when you pull it up, it gets a nice thin line. And that's just the little shape you want. Press and pull, press and pull. And then I'm gonna follow the same direction for these. And I'm going into white and yellow on my palette. It doesn't have to be mixed perfectly. Isn't it fun when some are lighter than others? And now I'll go with just my white. I'm going over these guys again, not, like I said, not, not purposely in any special spot. I'm just doing those little strokes. Another row. I, I do wanna see some of that gold behind. I'm not trying to fill out every little bit. They're really fun to do. Wait till you start. You could do them in any little still life or any little fall painting. You would do a pumpkin or anything. You could put a few down at the bottom if you'd like. 
anywhere. We're going to go back, like I said, and give these some nice bright white ones, but that's a yellow one and a white one to start. And let's do a purple one, which is really fun. And I know I'm rushing through them, but it has to go a little quick so I can work wet and wet. I'm going to make a purple up. There's just built, just mixing my red and blue to get a purple. I have a million purples in the jar, but I have to say, when I mix up the two primary colors and get this purple, it's really a nicer purple. I really like it. It's nice and dark. And, and I'm doing the same sort of thing, a rough oval shape. And I'm going to hop right in and just do a lighter shade of that. So I'm going to mix some white with that purple to get a lighter shade. Same strokes, press and pull a little straighter here. I get a little curve to the edges. I am, can you see I'm extending out over the oval I painted? I don't want to do it, you know, right inside perfectly. They're like little soldiers. I want them to be really kind of random and rough. Another little row. And look at the colors. See, I'm not mixing up a perfect light shade of purple. I have a little red, a little blue. It makes it more natural on the piece, on the item you're painting on the flower, that it varies a little and it's more just random and natural. And let me look at my guys. Yeah, I pretty much go ahead on the same sort of a, I'm going to do these guys another row there. Start these fun ones that poke off from the side. Karen, good idea. That's why I like to put these little blurbs on for you guys, because you can practice a little element of the painting and and you'll also have it as reference and you can use it on all sorts of different uh, paintings as well. So that's the first row. So we've got the dark background, lighter shade of it, first row. Now we'll go with some white. Even though it's just white, it's going to pick up some of the purple. It's when these three dry that we will hit them with some nice bright whites. And now I'm going back and see, I want that purple to drag in there. I want it to pick up the purple. I don't want it to be perfectly white. I want a few white petals later, but just a few random, not a whole series of them. So this is nice when this is picking up the purple. Is everyone excited about painting some fall paintings? I'm not excited about fall yet. I do love fall. I can, can't wait for the crisp air and the apples and the pumpkins and all that business, but I'm still in summer mode, but I do not mind painting some fall right now. What's your favorite fall subject? Anyone have particular things? Pumpkins or I love Halloween more even. Witches and scaredy cats and all kinds of fun things. So, okay. Let me look at what those look like on the video because sometimes it gives you a good clue when you're looking in a mirror with your painting or take a picture of it or the video. It really is interesting for me to see. So there they are. There are our mums until we add our little white highlights. So let it, let it dry. And I'll show you some quick and easy flowers if you'd like. I'm just gonna use my flat brush. This is probably like an eight or something. It's just a synthetic flat. And a fun, quick way to do some leaves, especially if they're just peeking out from behind, is I'm going to take I need a dark green actually. So we get it. Let's get, let's mix some blue and get a really dark green here. Maybe a tiny bit of black. I don't have my dark phthalo blue, which I love, but we're just going to get, you need a few shades. So we've got a dark green, a regular green for the leaf. I might use white as my highlight. I'll try some with that light green. It's just a method I use with a flat brush, loading my brush with the color of the leaf. Say, so say the leaf's going to be this Actually, let's make it lighter so it shows up on our background here. So I'm getting a little bit of a, a green on my brush. Taking one corner and just dipping it into the dark. One corner, dipping it into the white. I know it takes practice, but it's a fun technique to watch and then to try to, to practice with. So there's my flat brush. It's just got green, tiny bit of white, tiny bit of dark green on, one, on each side. I usually pat it a little bit just to get it to, to blend a little. And look at that. You've got all three colors with a nice blend in one stroke. I will just take and I would press down. I kind of give it a little wiggle and you can make maybe two or three until you have to reload paint there. I'll do it on the white so you can see. Now you can see I need to reload some paint there. 
practice this. It's really cool and it takes practice. So just take a piece of paper or, you know, a styrofoam palette or a paper plate. I can show you some great flowers with this technique too, but let's just work on um, leaves today. So the dark on one corner, a little bit of white on one corner, pat it out so it sort of blends. And then you can just go to town and make leaves. You, I, I give them a little wiggle. You could just make them flat, you know, a little bit different shapes. You can do something like this peeking out and then with your, even a smaller brush, I sometimes just do the same technique, different size flats, and you can make all different size leaves. You could do something like, you know, a little, one of these guys. It's green on green. I know it's a little hard to see, but it's like a little vine. You could just, and again, I'll just show you when I'm doing it. Just add the green, a little bit of the white, a little bit of the dark, and this is like the little viney thing. Can you see? It's nice to see all those colors, but because it's all wet on wet, you can blend it right on the brush. Let's try using this bright green, see what happens. A little bit of the white. We'll use this green as the dark. See if it shows up. Yeah, it's nice with a little of that bright green too, isn't it? They're great for peeking out behind any kind of flowers you want to make. I like it with the bright green. I'm going to do them on the edge so you can see. And again, it's just a press and a pull. So you can press and pull to the side if you want. Press and pull. I'd love to see you practice this and show me some of your, your practice pieces. And if you need help getting it, let me know. I can come on again and show you that. So reach out in a message or, you know, on a po in the post or whatnot. And I know it looks random and weird, but anyways, you got to see the mums. You got to see a fun technique. Then you could go back in to your leaves. Let me find a little liner, a liner brush, a small round, whatever. You could go back in with a dark or a light and give them some veins. That's kind of a thick one. That brush is kind of ew, not, that, not my favorite brush. I would like to really use a, a liner brush um, for something like that. And always, when you're doing a detailed bit like the, like the little veins, always add a good bit of water to your paint, thin it down. If it's more like ink, you'll be happier. It will, um, it'll flow nice for you. And you can make some nice veins. Light, light touch. So it's not like, oh, I can't paint a thin line. Get the proper brush, get the paint the proper consistency, and a light touch. If I was to press down, look, I'm not going to get a thin line. It's, I'm hardly got any pressure on my brush. It's very light touch, very light, very light. And even as I'm doing it, I'm lifting it right off the page to get a really nice thin line. When you get that paint thinned down nice, you can do quite a few leaves at one time putting those veins in. See how quick and easy you can do that? Because the paint is thin. If the paint was not thin, it would drag and you wouldn't get a nice, you can even, actually it's starting to drag a bit so you can kind of see it. And as I go, I'm, every few strokes, I'm adding a little more water there. Okay, the only thing we need to do to finish these guys up is the brighter white that I was telling you about. And again, I'm not going to repeat all of that. I just want a few of them to be brighter. So let's see if I can find some white that I haven't contaminated with all my colors. And it's just here and there. I've picked up some blue, of course. Hang on. So... Just a few here and there. Feel free, they look nice when you pull some way out over the edge and in, so it's a little more irregular shaped and not just a perfect little oval or a perfect little ball shape. So I just go here and there and put a few. And can you see, now the white ones really make the ones we did already go back a little bit. This, these are coming forward because they're so bright, but you're really seeing how, um, those few in there, tuck them in. You can really see how building it up from the darkest to the lightest really works for you. And it looks like they're pretty white. You'd say, oh gosh, they're, they are white already, but put a few in that are really bright. You'll see the difference. And you could go a little heavier if you want on this one because it's white and I know he's looking very bluish, but I believe he still reads as a white mum.
And can you see just I'm doing a few here and there. So I don't know. Those are a quick little way to do moms, you guys. It would be fun to do them as those rust colored ones. You know, you could start with something this shade and do them and you get those nice dark ones. I maybe wouldn't even build up to white. Try it with just the dark, dark background and then just use lighter reds to make those red maroony ones. All sorts of ways to play around, especially if you're doing it on paper. It is not, um, it's not hard at all. It just takes a little practice sometimes. So let me switch you around again. Um, there you are. Hey, I just want to see. Not that I can see your faces, but I kind of can when I'm looking. Hey, Donna. Hey, Barbara. Um, Alice is watching. Thanks for watching, Alice. So quick, easy lesson on mums. Um, and so I will tell you a little bit about the membership because I do want to share that I am excited that we are have our membership first of all we've got a nice little membership it's called tinkers cardists it's a private art membership and what you get in there is a couple of live zoom paintings with me a month like for instance the pumpkin one and, and another one that we're going to do poppies i think this month you also get um a couple pre-recorded so there's still um pre-recorded videos thrown into the membership for you but i'm there to answer questions and things too so we paint live by zoom a couple times we do a couple facebook lives um any paid classes that i do on the tinkers cart page you get free so next month we have a three-day truck challenge did you see it it's the truck with the witch driving for halloween and the scarecrows driving it with the pumpkins and then we have a winter one with a snowman all three paintings we are doing them monday tuesday wednesday night the end of september if you're interested and have not seen anything just put truck in the comments i'll send you the info but that class is free to the members so the cardists get quite a few little benefits never mind the cool community that we have in facebook it's a private group and the group is fabulous they help each other they encourage each other it's a no judgment zone we'd really have fun so i'd love for you to try it if you'd like to be on the waiting list put membership in the comments i'll send you the link to the to the waiting list and then you'll know first when we start end of september sometime um, it's a low price it's not it's not much more than a cup of coffee a week so so for your creative health it's worthwhile and um, you can cancel anytime so pop in and try and and here's our my friend Maisie coming to say hello come here Maisie come over here come up say hi to the say hello to all the painters this is my Irish wolfhound Maisie look up so they can see you girl look up so they can see you she's being shy you know she's so she's so she's so shy anyway she's my painting partner but if you'd like any information about the truck group put truck or just look on the page it's going to be all over the place i'm very crooked i know sorry guys um and if you want to know about the membership there's no um commitment just put your name on the waiting list and i'll let you know and i appreciate you guys watching me if you would like i i will put this in uh the description the phone number if you want me to text you when i go live like this send me a text you'll be on my list and then you'll get a little notification saying i'm going live um any questions you guys because i'm right here um yeah in your journal denise this is a great thing like mixed media journal this isn't even a mixed media pad sometimes you want to do your practice paintings in a mixed media pad this is just a sketchbook it's just my sketchbook and uh it's all i had here but i wanted to kind of show you the mums so it did dry fast and it's you know nothing nothing that you would probably frame and and sell but it's great to have it as as a little um learning experience and you can, and you can refer back to it and um make notes on the edges and it doesn't really matter so all right hey barbara yeah practice is fun um and i really am going to dig deeper into it with you guys as far as the um the the blending techniques the wet on wet which is similar to the the loading that we did on the brush and some of the washi um sometimes we use a wash like on this painting, for instance, that dark that's under the flowers and things here, it's a wash. It's a, it's a paintbrush with clear water and a little bit of dark and you wash it in. So there's a couple of techniques I use all the time that we're gonna really practice so that it's, when you jump into paint something, you're gonna know how to get your darks and you know how to get your lights and that sort of thing. So, um, Gail, your leaves will look like this, just a little bit of practice and they don't, Every, and I don't I always stress this when you guys are painting with me like everyone's looking at their painting like this and, and I even did an in-person party last night oh my god this is before they even start oh my I can't do this 
oh, this is not going to come out good. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, I don't like the way it looks. But you're looking at it from here. No one, no one's going to look at it from there. Step back, look at it the next day. You'll be amazed at how cool it looks. You guys cannot agree with that, right? So anyway, I'm going to let you get on with your day. You guys are great for watching me. I'll send out those links for you. Any questions, you can always send me a message. You can always text me on that number. I'm going to add it to the description for you rather than um, try to recite it. I'll put it in the description. You guys can find it. So, hey, thank you guys. Have a great afternoon. And let me know what you want to paint this fall. Okay, bye now.